Hey guys, grab your favorite beverage. You know what time it is. It's time for Coffee with Chris. Today, we're continuing our discussion about our values here at First Baptist Church Middleburg, and we're gonna talk about servant leadership. So today, we're going to talk about the third of our five values here at First Baptist Church. And by way of reminder, we've already talked about our first two values, things that, that really matter to us here at First Baptist Church. And the first value was spiritual growth. And as a church, we believe that spiritual growth occurs as we embrace the power of the gospel. The second value we talked about was shared lives. And we believe that shared lives provide the strength and support we need to face life's challenges. The Christian life is just too hard to live in isolation, and God doesn't want us to. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. And that's true of more than just our marriage relationship. It's true of the fact that we're called to live in community and share our lives with one another. Today we want to talk about servant leadership. We believe at First Baptist Church that servant leadership allows us to impact the world for Christ. And so as we contemplate the idea of servant leadership, what I want to do today is turn our attention to one of my favorite passages of scripture, John chapter 13, where Jesus models servant leadership for uh, for all of his followers to see and for all of his followers to uh, replicate in their lives. In John chapter 13 beginning in verse 1 the Bible says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the supper. And he laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and that was why he said, not all of you are clean. And when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now this kind of seems kind of weird. Why in the world would Jesus stoop to wash the feet of his disciples? And it's really something that is lost uh, on, on us in the 21st century because we just don't live in the same environment. But in the ancient world, uh, if you were walking around in the hot uh, Israeli desert and sweating, walking on dusty roads uh, that were, you shared with animals, your feet were going to get dirty. And so if you've been walking all day, uh, your feet were pretty filthy by the end of the day. And so if someone invited you into their home for a supper at the end of the day, it was customary to provide a basin of water to allow you to wash your feet. One, it was good for you. Two, it was good for everybody that you shared the table with. And so uh, this was just very common, but it was a filthy task. And it was not something that you did for someone else. Let's just face it, there are some things everybody needs to do for themselves. In the ancient world, foot washing was one of them. It was such a demeaning task that Hebrew law actually prohibited Hebrew slaves from doing it. You couldn't even ask a slave to wash your feet if you had one because it was such a demeaning task. But as we come to John chapter 13, here we have Jesus the night before he's going to go to the cross and die for the disciples. Uh, the night before he's going back to the Lord, we see Jesus stooping and washing the feet of his disciples. 
This is the creator of the universe, uh, the one who formed these men in the womb, the one who is upholding the universe, who gives them breath, the one who is about to die and bear the wrath of the Father for the sins that they committed. And Jesus bows before them and washes their feet. And he does it to set an example. He says, if I then, being your Lord and teacher, are willing to stoop and wash your feet, you ought to be willing to do the same for others. To follow me means to follow my example, is what Jesus is saying in this text. This is leadership. Jesus shows that in an effort to serve someone else, there's no task that's too demeaning, there's no task that's beneath him. He's willing to do what needs to be done to be a blessing to others. And as he is a blessing to others, he actually points them to our Heavenly Father. And he tells us to do the very same thing. And one of the things that uh, First Baptist Church has valued for the entire 122 years of our existence is servant leadership. We have always been a people marked by a willingness to go the extra mile for someone else, to not just share our resources and to share kind words, but to stoop and to do the hard work of serving others and being a blessing to them. And it's a spirit that God has blessed immensely in our church and allowed us to have a tremendous impact on our community and around the world. And as we articulate our values, we wanna make sure that we tell everyone, this is what we're about, servant leadership. And, and it's not just a tradition that we've inherited from those who went before us at First Baptist Church, and it's not just an example that we see here in Scripture, so it might be a good idea. Servant leadership actually allows us to impact the world for Christ because it's countercultural. This is the kind of stuff that you don't see folks doing in the world. Uh, who, who's, the, the folks whose lives haven't been transformed by the gospel, they have a tendency to look out for themselves. Uh, they're looking out for number one. They're not worried about sacrificing what they have or, or taking steps back in order to serve others, but that's exactly what King Jesus calls us to do. And so I want to challenge you to think about ways that you can model the life of a servant to those around you. How are, how's God using you to make a difference in the lives of others? How are you using your God-given gifts to make a difference in the lives of others? As we look at this tax, text, we see that uh, serving others actually accomplishes three things in our lives. Number one, it teaches us humility. As we uh, stoop to wash the feet of others, as we serve others in uh, less than ideal ways, as we serve others by doing things that are inconvenient for us or painful for us or just add a bunch of extra responsibilities to our plate, it actually reminds us that the world does not revolve around us and so it helps us to maintain a humble spirit. And humility is, is one of the uh, behaviors that God blesses most. In addition to teaching us humility, it results in blessing. Um, Jesus says, if you know these things and do them, you'll be blessed. And so there's a blessing reserved for those who serve others faithfully as a, and, and function as a servant. And then fine, finally, it leads to lasting impact. You go back to the early church, uh, they were a, a small band of individuals. They had no political power, they had no economic power, they had very little money. And, and those who made decisions to follow the Lord Jesus Christ often lost their jobs and their homes. They lost their livelihoods. It was just a, it was a difficult thing to make a decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But they continued to live out the ethic of the kingdom by following Jesus and serving others. And I think one of the most beautiful examples you find in church history is the example of Christians who would adopt abandoned babies in the world around them. And this, this really was an, an aspect of being a servant. Uh, it, it, infanticide was very common in the first century. If there was a baby that was born out of wedlock, if there was a baby that was born to a family that really couldn't afford to feed another mouth, if there was a baby that was born with a physical deformity, a lot of times they would just be put outside and exposed to the elements to die. And they would die of hypothermia or other uh, natural cause, other things that would happen as they were put out in nature. And it was very common for Christian families to see babies put out by the road to pick them up and take them home with them. I want you to think about that. 
So is that servant leadership or is that just adopting a baby? Well, it's servant leadership. They're serving that child that has nothing to offer them at the moment. They're serving that child who's going to be a burden on them for 13, 15, 18 years. They're, they're going out of their way, even though they're struggling and poor, to be a blessing to someone else. And it was that example that caused many to notice that Christians were different. And they really were living out the example that had been given to them by their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, pagan historians actually remarked about the impact of the example of Christians in this one instance. And that's not the only instance of Christians serving the world around them. There are thousands of instances in church history. But as we wrap up our talk today, what I want to challenge you today is to think about how God will use you to have an impact on the life of others. How will you point someone to the Lord Jesus Christ by being a servant to them? Because really, uh, spiritual leadership is just helping someone take their next step as they follow God. So how's God gonna use you to help someone take their next step towards God as you serve them in some capacity? What, what gift has God given you? What time has God given you? What resource has God given you that will allow you to have an impact on a, on a person, an individual? Uh, what gift, time, or resource has God given you that will allow you to have an impact on a group of people, maybe a small group or a kid's Sunday school class? What, what, what gift or time or resource has God given you that would allow you to be an impact to your church or to your community, or just to your small, the small conclave of houses in your part of your neighborhood. God wants you to make a difference as you serve others, and as you serve others, you will make a difference. So as we close today, let me challenge you to think about how you can serve your neighbor. And until then, make sure you drink plenty of coffee, spend plenty of time in God's Word. Hope to see you Sunday. Until then, have a great day.